hello all welcome back to software testing course so in the last video we had uh, started with the fundamentals of testing and uh, we had seen there what is testing the difference between testing debugging debugging then verification and validation then uh, root cause analysis and we had uh, completed till significance of testing so let's move on to the next one that is cost of quality so the ultimate objective of any organization would be to produce or to develop the quality software right but as we all know the quality does not come for free so you have to pay for pay a price for it so you have to put the required effort to produce the quality product the effort this effort whatever you put is the cost of quality now this cost has three components that is your failure cost appraisal cost and prevention cost so first one is failure cost so failure cost is the cost of fixing the product defects okay so whenever the defects come uh, you know uh, it appears in your software and you uh, correct those defect that we call it as a failure cost next is appraisal cost now this cost uh, it is the cost of assessing the product to check whether it has defects or not remember in this one appraisal cost the cost for removing the defects is not included it is just you have to check whether the defect is present or not okay and the last one is prevention cost as the name suggest it is the prevention of defects so it is the cost for modifying the process to avoid defects in the software for example you may like to develop a prototype to reduce the defects due to improper specification so our aim it should be to reduce the failure cost to the maximum extent possible even if there is an increase in the appraisal cost and prevention cost so the uh, the failure cost has to be reduced okay so even during development the cost of repair is high why why is that so say suppose you are developing the code okay for your project and if you get uh, bugs there so this might be because you have developed a wrong code maybe the specification whatever whatever you have seen in the srs may be wrong or the design document the, there could be some mistakes in that so even during the development the cost of repair would be high if the defects are found in the testing phase so the aim should be to reduce the defects well before your coding stage by a thorough review of your srs document design document and whatever the work product that comes before your coding process okay so the cost of quality it has three components failure cost appraisal cost and prevention cost okay next we will study about the psychology of testing so before jumping into the psychology of uh, testing first uh, let's try to answer the fundamental question that is who should test the software is it the developer or is it the test engineer or a tester okay then comes the next fundamental question what is testing according to the developer and what is testing the basic definition of testing okay according to your test engineer so if you ask the developer he would say if you ask him a question what is testing he would say it is the process to prove that the software works correctly right the developer he might give you this definition he according to the developer the testing it is a process that to prove that the software works correctly now this is the developer's psychology of testing okay the person who developed the software will only try to show that the software works correctly so as a developer he will only give those inputs for which the correct results are obtained or correct output is obtained okay or uh, say suppose uh, there is one button in a form so if there are multiple buttons in a form he will only click on the button that will work so he knows that if he clicks on some other button the software will crash so whenever he is testing or he is demoing that software to someone as a developer he will only give the positive scenario so 
let's uh, you know um, i'll give you a basic example we had seen this in uh, your c programming lab okay uh, i guess uh, that was uh, to find out the largest of three numbers right so what would have uh, what you guys did right so you guys typed the program it was working fine and you just called me to show the output so how did you show me the output you have given the three numbers and output was already present on your screen right and at that time your programming uh, your program that largest of three numbers program was working correctly so then what did i say i tried to touch the keyboard and i tried to do some modifications or you know i tried to give some different uh, inputs to them what you did at that time some of you you didn't allow me to touch the keyboard only you said madam output is on the screen it is correct we are getting the largest of three numbers right so what did you prove as a developer you have written the program you just proved that you are given three numbers and the program was running correctly right so what did i do next i took the keyboard from you i gave the negative inputs how did your program work then it crashed right it was not showing you the largest of three numbers remember that situation now that is the psychology of the developer i am not saying it is wrong but as a student psychology the same would be your developer psychology as well but in a commercial environment in the organization so if you do this type of testing then what will happen it would be dangerous right you cannot deliver a software which is full of bugs to your customer right now the same question what is testing this same question you ask to a test engineer or the tester his definition might be something like it is a process to prove that software does not work right this appears to be very sad definition surprisingly when the software is given to a qa department or testing department in your organization they will follow the same definition their only aim is to find out bugs and their only aim is to prove that the software you develop it does not work okay so the test engineers joy i mean it has no bounds whenever you know they point out some bug in the software strictly if the aim of the test engineer it is to prove that the software does not work then it can be test, uh, you know considered as a good testing process so if persons other than the developers if they test the software then they will follow that uh, this particular definition that the software does not work okay so this type of psychology towards the testing would bring out most of the defects so however there is a practical difficulty in this definition so how long you will go on testing after which you know you can confidently say yes the software works how long you can you use this definition so many operating systems and application software packages which we bought they have bugs but still they have been released into the market and millions of copies have been sold right so you can never say that testing is complete and the software is defect free never you can never say that okay so let's summarize that is the psychology of the people it plays a important role in the testing of the software so testing the software by a developer even it has many advantages that is your developer is likely you know he would be familiar with the user requirements uh, you know a specification documents and the design so developer will have the necessary background and knowledge to generate the tests the next one is developer knows the details of the code written by them so it is you know to carry out the code level testing it is very easy for the developer next in case of uh, you know there are any defects debugging has to be done by the developer so testing should be done by the developer himself so but because of you know the mindset of the developers and psychology of uh, testing you know um, it's unfortunately that testing by the developers does not yield good result so it is better to always have a separate team a separate testing team in the organization so what are the advantage of having separate testing team in your organization the first one is 
the testing would be done objectively so it is likely that many defects are uh, you know defects can be detected if you have separate testing team the next one is test engineers are specialized in testing and using the testing tools required for their job so they can do the job effectively or productively so for example if you have security testing expert experts that are um, you know the persons trained in the security testing aspects of the software and if the banking software has to be tested so it is always better to have the security experts so in the test so that uh, you know rather than normal developers testing it it is always good to have security testers do the testing so when a separate testing team is formed it is very important that at least some test engineers they should be involved in the project from the beginning that is from the requirement stage itself so that as a test engineer they can check whether each and every functionality or the specifications can be testable or not so the next thing important point is that the testers and the, the developers they need to interact regularly right to start with the developers need to brief the testers on the software to be tested its functionality design aspects etc the testers need to periodically communicate the test results to the developers that is the bugs or whatever the difficulties to the developers the communication has to be very cordial so only with you know only the person having good communication skills and the interpersonal skills they can survive as testers or the test engineers even if right even if you have uh, good communication skills and all in spite of the best efforts whatever your leaders or the managers put the development team and testing team fight with each other okay so this is because the developers are more you know they are attached to their work and if someone points out that there is a bug or uh, you know defect in their uh, code whatever they have written they would be you know you know they would be hurt okay so on the other hand the test engineers think that they have they are objectively doing their work to find the defects so it is important for everyone maybe the developer or the tester so for everyone they have to realize that the focus should be in developing the quality software and only through the teamwork this objective can be achieved both the developers and the testers they have to play a role in developing the quality software next the test engineers need to communicate their results with uh, you know to the develop uh, developers and they have to tell in such a manner that the developers feelings or you know they should not hurt the developers okay they should not be disrespectful then the developers need to appreciate the code written by anyone right and can have the defects okay so this is the psychology of testing how what would be the psychology of the developer what could be the uh, you know psychology of the test engineer or the tester then what are the advantages if a developer does the testing and what could be the advantages if the testers do the testing okay then next we will see the testing choices okay how can you do the testing so during the last 20 years the cost were uh, the cost of hardware is it is decreasing drastically okay and at the same time the cost of software is it is increasing rapidly so why so it is due to the higher manpower cost and infrastructure cost in the software so as a result many organizations okay particularly those in the developed countries are outsourcing their complete software development activities outsourcing means they are hiring someone you know to do their work okay but they used to handle the software testing and quality assurance activities themselves even that trend is changing now that is many organizations are outsourcing even that testing activity entire project you know they would be uh, giving it to some companies and they will uh, that some company will do the development testing everything and they'll deliver the software to the client or the parent uh, not parent the client company okay 
So we'll consider an example wherein a bank that gets its banking software developed by a software organization in India, software development organization in India. So after the software is developed, it will be given to another organization, uh, say in Malaysia, that focuses on testing the banking software for the functionality, performance based testing, whatever it is. Okay. Many IT organizations are giving thirst to this thirst third party testing. That is even software development organizations are getting the software that is tested by independent agencies to ensure quality products. Okay, the managers of the IT user organization as well as the software development organization. Now they have two choices that is to do the testing in house or to do outsourcing of the testing activity. So we are concerned here only about the testing choices, not the development choices, right? So I had uh, just now I had uh, told you that a company say for example, which is in US, it can outsource the development activity to the company which is in India, then this Indian company can do the development activity and then they can outsource the testing activity to some other company or agency which is in another uh, you know, country or in the same country. That doesn't matter. But now here we are not uh, you know talking about the development choices but we are talking about the testing choices. So there are two types. One is in-house testing and the other one is outsourcing or outsource. Okay. First, we'll see in-house testing. So, in-house testing is uh, certainly a good choice if you have necessary infrastructure and the manpower available. So, what are the uh, advantages of having in-house testing? In-house means in the organization. In your organization only, you'll develop and you'll test the software. Okay. The advantage of doing this is your intellectual property, it will not be given to the third party. That means your work products, basically the work products will not be shared across the third party organizations. Okay. The next one, the management will have total control over the time and budget. So what happens if you give uh, your uh, product to test to some other company? So you cannot control them, right? Till some point you can, but you can, you cannot, you know, uh, torture them or you cannot uh, again and again call them and ask whether the testing has been completed or you cannot uh, have the total or, you know, full control over the third party. Okay. Next one is the in-house testing team has the access to the developers and hence the test engineers can interact with the developers on need basis. Yeah, this is very important. Why? Because say, Whenever the testing team is carrying out, uh, you know, testing and if they come across some difficulties, then if you are using or if you are doing in-house testing, the tester can directly call up the developer and or, you know, he can, uh, the tester can go and meet the developer in person and they can discuss and come to a solution, right? Okay. Then what could be the difficulties in in-house testing? First one, maintaining the infrastructure is very costly. Okay. Next, the necessary expertise may not be always available. Oh, yeah, this is also true. That is, uh, first thing, uh, in-house testing, whenever you are carrying out the building uh, cost or other infrastructures would be, you know, you, you should be having those many space and all. So that, will, that would be costly. Next, if, uh, for example, say, you are doing a sales force, uh, testing of the sales force, uh, you know, project and you do not have uh, a single person who knows the sales force, then that could be a problem. Okay. The third one, getting the manpower, training them and keeping them for the duration of the project is a challenge. Yeah. Just now I had given you an example, right? The uh, sales force project. So if suppose say you do not have that particular uh, expertise, Salesforce expert in your project, say you hire them or, you know, you train them, you take some tester, yeah, you train him, then again, keeping them for your entire project would be a real difficult challenge in in-house testing. Next, we'll talk about outsourcing. Okay. Yeah. 
as testing has become very specialized uh, now a number of organizations are outsourcing their activity outsourcing means uh, testing outsourcing means uh, you give your product or project to some other party the third party or different organization for testing so if you do this one then what are the advantages the first one is software testing needs lot of infrastructure right high end servers network with high bandwidth testing tools etc the prime contractor need not maintain this infrastructure then what will happen the cost would reduce right so first advantage is that if you outsource your uh, testing you know testing of your project then you need not maintain lot of infrastructure so it is not your headache right it is the headache of the third party that is the one organization that is a uh, headache of the organization which is doing the testing the next one the subcontractor will have the necessary human resources readily available yeah uh, again i'll take the example of uh, salesforce uh, project only so say suppose uh, you are working in some company abc and uh, you have developed that project but you do not have the salesforce uh, testers so what your company abc can do is they can give this project to the company xyz so this xyz maybe it is a specialized company which only takes salesforce project and it does the testing of that right so your xyz company is now a subcontractor so they'll have the necessary human resources available the testers available they would be having professional uh, trained in specialized areas such as security testing and uh, you know conformance testing and all the prime contractor that is your company abc it should not need not uh, sorry it need not bother about recruiting and training the manpower the next one is as testing professionals are experts in their area their productivity will be very high and hence testing is done faster and better at subcontractors premises okay uh, uh, again uh, we'll go back to the example where we have uh, abc and uh, xyz company so as you will give you know your project to the xyz company they'll have professionals and they know how to do the testing of it right so your time would be reduced the testing time would be reduced and it will be done in a uh, done in faster and better better way okay next the problems associated with the psychology of testing are eliminated as the test engineer belong to another organization yeah again as because the testing professionals are experts they can do this job better the last one is if the testing activity is outsourced to an organization in a developing country then it results in lost or uh, lo sorry lot of cost saving this means um again we'll go back to the same example abc company which is uh, say suppose it is in india and it is developing um it is developing some project okay and uh, that particular project is being developed in bangalore for example now if the outsourcing this abc company say suppose uh, it is planned you know to outsource the same uh, uh, the project in the same country that is in india probably in hyderabad yeah if the two development and the testing uh, teams if they are in the same developing country then it would be again advantage why because cost saving how the cost would be saved in terms of your calls right and they can call up uh, as the time zone will be same then uh, your um, developers and testers can contact each other and can do the work in a better manner in a faster way now what are the disadvantages or difficulties in outsourcing the first one is intellectual property work products has to be shared to the third party your srs document design or if you are doing white box testing then the code has to be shared okay now you have to ensure that the third party will honor the intellectual property is the right uh, property rights is a big issue here so you you know you cannot always be sure that your uh, um, documents are safe right if they have their honor then they'll do it otherwise there might be a chance that your property can be shared the next is the time frame is not under strict control of the prime contractor as because we have outsourced 
then evaluating the vendor particularly for the first time is very difficult yeah this is the important point so as a company say if you are planning to outsource right then to which, to which company you will outsource is the question and if suppose the outsourcing company say you have never you know you know you have never contacted them before or you do not have any business with them if he is the if you are giving for the first time then how do you trust that particular company right so many prime contractors feel that outsourcing they will create problems so when the choice of the vendor is incorrect then the outsource outsourcing will create a bad experience okay so these are the two choices for your testing either in house that is do the testing in your own organization then the next one is outsourcing that is you do the development give the testing to some other companies that's it for today we'll conclude our session thank you